Um, I also provide home water visits, and I'm happy to say I've done about up to 15 in the last year. Um, we are also able to participate at annual events, um, about 16 a year. Um, we promote the utilities department and several of our campaigns, which of course covers water conservation, recycling, household hazardous waste, and um, refuse. And also, too, the message is out there with our print ads, not only in English and in Spanish. And this past month in April, I was also able to coordinate and work with Madam Mayor in celebration of National Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation. So with that said, on behalf of the Utilities Department and being the Water Conservation Specialist, I think we've done a tremendous job um, doing outreach and providing com the community information of how to conserve indoors and outdoors and also having to um, reach out to these students. So in um, May, we'd like to invite these students to participate for our seventh annual water poster contest. And I'm happy to say that we've received close to 200 um, posters and it was hard. It was hard to pick and choose, but I have to admit a lot of these students were able to come up with ideas not only to promote the whole water conservation, but to send a message out there for only um, not only their peers, but their parents and also to the adult community. Um, again, it was really hard at first when teachers would call me and say, you know what, can they, you know, do one then one posters, two posters, and I even had one teacher call me and ask if she can actually turn in six. Said, well, it was only one entry. So again, with 200 participants, we've narrowed it down to um, four um, place winners. So with that said, I'd like to start off and call upon Noemi Rincon, who is the honorable mention for this year 2016 Water Awareness Poster Contest. <laughs> so with her prize, she's able to receive an honorable mention trophy, and she has free passes to San Maria Valley Discovery Museum and four passes, swim passes to Paul Nelson Aquatic Center. Congratulations. Yeah. And for third place winner, I'd like to call upon Valerio Castro from Robert Bruce in Mrs. Billinger's class. <laughs> Valeria was able to receive $20 gift certificate to Burmers two free passes to the Samaria Valley Discovery Museum, and eight, eight free swim passes to Paul Nelson Aquatic Center. And she'd like to say a few words. I was inspired to teach others that it is important to save water. And we have for second place winner, we have Anthony Lopez from Alvin School in Ms. McPeter's class. Okay. And Anthony was able to receive $40 gift certificate to Boomers, three free passes to Samuel Valley Discovery Museum, and 10 passes to um, the Aquatic Center. And Anthony would like to say a few words. Hi, my name is Anthony, and I'm from Alvin School. I drew my pic my drawing because I like to draw, and my teacher said we needed to draw a water conservation picture. My character is special because he saves the water. I am excited because I have never won a contest for drawing before. <laughs> and first.
first place winner goes to Valeria Pignon from Robert Bruce in Mrs. Billinger's class. In first place, she was able to receive two Magic Mountain tickets, $60 gift certificates to Boomers, and 15 swim passes to Paul Nelson Pool. Well, okay. And she would like to say a few words. I was inspired because when I was little, I used to take very long showers, but then <laughs> I realized in my heart that we need to save water. <laughs> so congratulations to the students and thank you to the teachers who inspired them. Um, Everyone has their saying of how to conserve water. And when I first started doing these class presentations, it was somewhat hard to define the word conserve. So I would always tell these students it's how to conserve, how to save. So with the pictures and them having to create these drawings, I was able to have a poster made out, which will be displayed here at City Hall. And it shows first, second, third place in honorable mention. Mm -hmm. And the students will also be acknowledged and be interviewed through Samia Times, um, also on Facebook and other, other, other media resources. So to the students and to all the teachers, um, thank you again. And I really do appreciate you all participating. Um, several sponsors who I'd like to acknowledge is the Samia Recreation and Parks Department, Santa Maria Bonita School District, American General Media, Emerald Wave Media, Santa Maria Valley Discovery Museum, Graphics LTD, and JC Trophies. So once again, I do appreciate um, all the students' hard work, the teachers, and the community, and save water. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to all of you, and thank you so much for participating, and thank, be sure and thank your teachers, too. Thank you, Ms. Ritchie, appreciate that. We have another proclamation, and Council Member Boyson will be making that presentation. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor, but before I do, I just want to say I want Myra Ritchie's job. I think that's <laughs> got to be the best job in the that's city. That's it, yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Myra. Okay, uh, well, it uh, gives me very, uh, it, it gives me great pride to uh, uh, read the proclamation recognizing the month of May as National Bike Month. Whereas the month of May is, uh, um, <clears throat> whereas the month of May is National Bike Month and May 16th through May 20, 2016 is Bike to Work Week to encourage the local residents to try biking for transportation. And whereas National Bike Month has been celebrated in the United States since 1956, and whereas commuting by bike has proven economical, environmentally sound, and healthy for individuals and communities, and whereas widespread bike commuting helps reduce traffic congestions, increase pollution-free transportation, provide a great form of aerobic exercise that can be enjoyed for a lifetime, and foster a great way to explore new vistas from a different and leisurely perspective. Whereas bicycling is a lifelong sport and popular outdoor activity among youth in America and third most popular activity among adults. And whereas bike commuting has grown by 62% since 2000. And whereas the city of Santa Maria is committed to promoting and supporting multimodal transportation, including bicycling. And whereas all motorists are encouraged to share the road with cyclists. Now therefore, Alice Patino, Mayor of the City of Santa Maria, does hereby recognize the month of May 2016 as National Bike Month in the City of Santa Maria and encourage all residents to participate in National Bike Month activities to help promote uh, the many benefits of bicycling. And here to receive it, and I can tell you uh, for a fact that they were not riding leisurely this morning down 135 when uh, they passed me up, uh, is the Tailwinds Writing Group, uh, Ken Daly, I think, is still the president there.
gotten smaller. Looks like Caldera is back there. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Council Members, staff. We thank you and accept this uh, proclamation. We'd also like to thank the city and specifically Steve Kahn and company for two things that they're working on. One, last year they held various meetings around town to get public input on the bicycle master plan and to try to figure out the public interest for prioritizing a lot of the actions that are in the, the master plan. The master plan's very thick, there's a lot of action in there, and we all know that we can't do it all, but hopefully we can march ahead and, and get some of it done for a safe bicycling community. The second thing Steve's working on is the Safe Routes to School. This is a program that teaches <coughs> students in class safe practices on the bicycle. It also offers an opportunity for a maintenance area for kids to repair their bikes for free. So with these two actions, I think we can really make Santa Maria a safer biking community so we can use our bikes for transportation, for exercise, and also to reduce the carbon footprint. Thank you very much. Next, we have another proclamation, and Councilmember Waterfield will be making that presentation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This proclamation is for the awareness of the compost week. Whereas the month of May is national. Whoops, that's a bike. That's the bike again. <laughs> Whereas the Composting Council of Canada, Ireland, Australia, United Kingdom, and the United States have declared the first week of May to be the annual International Compost Awareness Week. And whereas the City of Santa Maria Wastewater Treatment Plant was an early pioneer in helping establish a regional compost facility at Ingle and Gray, where the city's biosolids have been composted since 1993, transforming the compost into a product that makes healthy soil and a proven method of conserving water. And whereas the City of Santa Maria Solid Waste Division developed a successful green waste collection program diverting green waste from the landfill, conserving valuable landfill space and utilizing those valuable organics to make healthy soil through composting. And whereas this year's theme, compost, the soil and water connection, was selected, to the, was selected to highlight the importance of compost in conserving water and healthy soil. And whereas the City of Santa Maria and Ingle and Gray, Inc. have created a partnership to serve the recycling goes of the Central Coast and Ingle and Gray, Inc. has successfully taken organic feedstock, feedstock and composted the material for sustainable landscaping horticultural and agricultural practices. Now therefore, Alice M. Patino, Mayor of the City of Santa Maria, hereby proclaims the week of May 1st through the 7th, 2016th as Compost Awareness Week in the City of Santa Maria in recognition of the efforts of composting councils, extension agents, homeowners, landscapers, farmers, recyclers, public workers, composters, gardeners and plant growers everywhere. And here to accept the proclamation is Bob Ingle of Ingle and Gray. Honorable mayor and fellow council members, um, Thank you. If, if you can, one thing you can say is we're consistent. This has to be about the 15th year that we brought you plants. So. <laughs> um, yeah, right. well, and, maybe a couple. and Mr. Engel, we do appreciate that you bring it right around Mother's Day, so Bob and I look <laughs> good. There's, that's not a coincidence. <laughs> Jack goes all out on Mother's Day. <laughs> well, on behalf of the United States Composting Council, I'd like to thank you for recognizing um, International Compost Awareness Week. Um, we just had a successful uh, landscape uh, seminar at Muscle Center uh, last Saturday and Myra's team from uh, Water uh, was there to help spread the word. We had about 45 people that showed up and 
many more that came out and got compost from our bins and transplants to take back home and put in their vegetable gardens. Um, so um, it, it was kind of in honor of kicking off uh, International Compost Awareness Week and to support the recycling in uh, Santa Maria. So I, I, again, I'd like to thank the city for being so forward looking and setting up these facilities and having these services. Um, it's great leadership. So thank you and the staff for all doing that. Thank you, Mr. Engel. Now we have another proclamation. I will be making that presentation. Whereas the time is fast approaching for the Elk 73rd Annual Rodeo and Parade, June 2nd through June 5th, 2016, in the city of Santa Maria, considered by many to be the event of the year. And whereas the Santa Maria Elks Rodeo Queen kickoff and auction took place on Saturday, April 23rd, at the San Real Elks Lodge 1538, unveiling candidates sponsored by the Elks Recreation while raising funds with a live auction, raffle, and live entertainment. And whereas, continuing the tradition of Clarence Minetti and Leland Butch Seamus, hundreds of loyal Elks Lodge 1538 members have volunteered and been drafted to help make this rodeo a tremendous success. And whereas the San Real Elks Lodge 1538 has been named number one Elks Lodge in the United States for the 16th of the last 34 years. And whereas Santa Maria Elks Rodeo Parade will begin at 9 o'clock on Saturday, June 4th, and continue down Broadway from Mill to Ena Streets, dedicated to the Breast Cancer Awareness Tough Enough to Wear Pink program. And whereas it has been a long-standing tradition to begin wearing Western clothes several weeks prior to the Elks Rodeo. Now, therefore, I, Alice Patino, Mayor of the City of Santa Maria, hereby proclaim May 1st through June 5th as t at 2016 as Go Rodeo Days in the City of Santa Maria and encourage all residents and businesses to enter into the Rodeo spirit by wearing Western apparel. And signed here, this have caused my hand the seal of the city of Santa Maria to be affixed the third day of May 2016. And here to accept this is Phil Hardwick from the Elks Club. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's quite an honor for the Elks Club and the Elks Parade and the Elks Recreation to receive this honor each year. Uh, for the City Council and the Mayor to take time out to recognize what we do. And we appreciate it a great deal. You know, last year's rodeo was probably the best rodeo this city has seen in many decades. In fact, we were nominated by the Women's Professional Rodeo Association as the top mid-sized rodeo in America of that year. Um, we had reports from several different businesses that they, that they broke all sales records last year. Uh, cars Boots, or, yeah, Cars Boots, Boot Barn, Boot Barn sold completely out of children's clothing. Uh, Chrysler, uh, Santa Maria Chrysler sold more Dodges than they've ever sold more Dodge trucks at that point. So, you know, what we're doing works. Yeah, and, we're, and we're proud to do it. This year's rodeo is gonna be another outstanding rodeo. Uh, one of the, two of the immediate benefits of, of winning top rodeo last year was uh, Wayne Tallman and, uh, I'm sorry, D D Bob Tallman and Wayne Brooks called us and asked if they could be our announcers this year. They're the top announcers in the business. They do uh, Calgary Stampede, the National Pro Rodeo Finals, uh, uh, Reno Rodeo, they don't do small town rodeos, but they're doing ours. They called us and asked to do it. It's pretty cool. We're getting Dustin uh, Rumfield, the top for two years in a row, the world's champion uh, barrel man uh, back this year. He was hilarious last year. And oddly, we're getting, a, as one of our specialty acts, we're getting a, a young man from France called Manu. It took uh, Cotton Rosser five years to get a visa from Manu. He makes his living jumping over angry, charging bulls, doing somersaults in the air, and that sort of thing. It's an amazing act to watch. I have to assume that, that there's a pretty high unemployment rate in France. <laughs> 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 but, 
but man, who will be there? Uh, it's going to be a great rodeo, and I hope all of you will join us. Um, I just wanted to point out that we also have one of the finest BMX bicycle tracks in America at our rodeo grounds, and we produce a tremendous amount of uh, compost material. <laughs> I hope to see you all there. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would also like to acknowledge Mr. Cordero, who's sitting in the audience, who sat up here with us, and thank you, Mike, for all you do at the Elks Club. And I certainly want to uh, congratulate and acknowledge Karen Feldpouch, who is the exalted ruler and the first woman. <laughs> Not the first woman, the first woman exalted ruler in Santa Maria, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for all you do. The Elks has done so much for recreation for the youth in our community for so many years. We sure appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. May I just add one thing? I, I'm sorry, I forgot. It's normal sure. for me. This is the year we think the Queen's Contest has come back with a vengeance. Peter Sterling's responsible for that. And uh, this looks like the year that they're going to break $11 million wow. that they've earned yeah. and 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 return directly to our community and, and to community improvements. It's a wonderful organization. We're all proud of Peter, and $11 million is a lot of money. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank Phil. You. Next, we have another proclamation and council member voice that will be making that presentation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's uh, with uh, pride that I um, proclaim uh, National Day of Prayer, May 5th. Whereas the National Day of Prayer is an annual event established by an act of Congress which encourages Americans to pray for our nation, its people, and its leaders. And whereas many observances are held across the country which concentrate on the need to pray for those in leadership in all levels of national, church, and educational areas of influence. Whereas days of prayer have been called for since 1775 when the Continental Congress designated a time for prayer in forming a new nation. And whereas in 1863, Abraham Lincoln called for such a day. And whereas officially day of prayer was established as an annual event by an act of Congress in 1952 and was signed into law by President Truman. And whereas the law was amended in 1988 and signed by President Ronald Reagan, establishing the day of prayer as the first Thursday of May in each year. Whereas day of prayer belongs to all Americans and every American can observe the day of prayer in his own or her own way. And whereas Protestant, Roman Catholic, and Jewish leaders are included in day of prayer's expression of this event celebrated in Washington, D.C. and throughout the country. Now therefore, Alice Patino, mayor of the city of Santa Maria, hereby recognizes May 5th, 2015 as day of prayer observance in the city of Santa Maria and encourages people of all faith to participate in day of prayer according to their own tradition. And as usual, uh, accepting this proclamation is Kathy Staples. Thank you so much, Jeff. <laughs> Madam Mayor, I'm so glad our wonderful Elks held back for a minute. Uh, my name is Kathy Staples. I'm the president of the National Day of Prayer, and I am an Elk. And we are thrilled to say that this year we will be honoring our wonderful Elks, God bless them all, with Mike Arndt, who is here in the audience with us tonight, and some of his wonderful other Elks will be accompanying him to say thank you, Elk, for all the wonderful work you've done. We're so glad we're a part of you, and we pray for you. So um, it was good enough for Abraham Lincoln. He felt that this nation needed prayer, and it needs... Um, this year, our theme is Wake Up America. This is Cecile Prevost. This is our Master of Ceremonies, Pastor Dave Brogan. And Tara Presley will be uh, uh, honoring, uh, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday with the prayer walk. So we just kind of wanted to introduce you to some of the team. The healing rooms will be offering opportunities for prayer on Friday also, as well as throughout this week. This week is dedicated to praying for this city. And then, of course, for our nation. There will be more than 14,000 uh, events just as, as we are holding here across the nation to honor and pray for our uh, country. And don't we need it? Don't we need it not only here but across this country? So 
The reason I'm uh, here with you tonight is to invite the general public to thank you, Honorable Mayor, and thank you, uh, Manager Rick Hayden, for your dedication as a city to see that prayer is there and part of your city and all that you do. We are grateful to you, and we just want to honor you and Madam Mayor and all our city council. Thank you so very much, and we look forward to seeing you Thursday, 11 o'clock, free lunch, by those blessed Kwanians, and uh, hope to see you then. Anything else, Sue? No, I just wanted to say that uh, you'll be joining millions nationwide praying for our country, and as Kathy said, it's very needed, and especially here in Santa Maria with all that has been happening and some of the good things that have been coming out of prayer. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we have another proclamation, and Councilmember um, Waterfield will be making the presentation. You know, you gentlemen are welcome to stay for the entire meeting if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> I will wait till they clear the room. Madam Mayor, it is with great honor to present this proclamation of the National Police Week. Whereas all of the promises America offers, none is more precious or elusive than the right to be free from crime. And whereas, and whereas dedicated men and women who have chosen law enforcement as a career face extraordin extraordinary risks and dangers preserving our freedom and security. And whereas during the week of May 8th through May 14th, 2016, National Police Week is observed in order to recognize hazardous work, serious responsibilities, and strong commitment of our national peace officers. And whereas, in conjunction with the important obs observance of the City of Santa Maria, is observing May 11th, 26th, as Peace Officers Memorial Day in commemoration of those noble officers who have tragically sacrificed their lives in the line of duty. And whereas six California peace officers were recognized as being killed in the line of duty during 2015, and whereas these special observants provide all Santa Marians with the opportunity to appreciate the heroic men and women who have dedicated their lives to preserving public safety. Now, therefore, Alice M. Pentino, Mayor of the City of Santa Maria, hereby recognizes the week of May 8th through May 14th as National Police Week and proclaim Wednesday, May 11th as Peace Officers Memorial Day in the city of Santa Maria and encourages all residents and businesses to remember those individuals who have gave their lives for our safety and expressed our appreciation to those who continue to dedicate themselves to making Santa Maria a safer place in which to live. And accepting the proclamation is Sergeant Todd Logan. Madam Mayor, members of the City Council, Mr. Hayden, members of the City staff, good evening. Also to the public, good evening as well. As you know, law enforcement is a dangerous profession, and unfortunately each year lives are lost by the officers. 2015 was no exception, losing six officers in the line of duty. But I think instead of mourning their loss, I think it's better to celebrate their lives. In doing so, again, I'd like to thank you for this proclamation, but invite each of you as well as members of the community on Wednesday, May 11th at 10.30 a.m. to a celebration of life for the fallen officers. Prior to the celebration at approximately 10 a.m. starting on the north end of the city at Romer, there'll be an emergency vehicle caravan that goes southbound on Broadway to Bataravia and then to the new police department at 1111 West Bataravia Road. After that, there'll be a celebration to honor the fallen officers. And at the conclusion of that celebration, there'll be a Santa Maria style barbecue with tickets available for $7 in advance and $10 at the door and all the proceeds go to, to benefit the Department's Benevolent Fund. But again, 
thank each of you for this recognition. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. And I would, I would also like to mention that Officer Ricky Arias was also Arias. 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 Okay. Arias. <laughs> I got to do that tongue thing with Dallas. <laughs> Thank you, Ricky. You know, I, a proclamation seems so, so trite in a way, and I know I speak for everyone sitting up here. We have got the best police department. We've got wonderful policemen and women, and what what we have done, we have done in this past year has been just, just amazing to me. And we. We probably know more that's gone on than, than the average citizen in town. And, and all along, we said, we are behind you 100%. And we went through some very tough times. But um, just thank you. Thank you very much. And there's a cowboy over there that would like to, are you a cowboy? Would like to say <laughs> something. Chief Martin. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor uh, and, and council members. I, I just want you to know that uh, just a couple days ago, Santa Maria Police Department was represented in Sacramento, uh, where uh, one sergeant and eight of our officers caravaned uh, up to Sacramento with a number of other uh, agencies on the Central Coast and spent a day and a half there at the memorial. Uh, and I just, uh, for the record, I'd like to um, um, uh, provide some of the names of the officers that, were, that recently were killed. Officer uh, Michael Johnson from the San Jose Police Department. Officer David Joseph Nelson from the Bakersfield Police Department. Um, Sergeant Scott Lunger from the Hayward Police Department, Officer Bryce Haynes from the San Bernardino Police Department. So, you know, just I, you know, as Sergeant Logan mentioned, we want to keep them, keep their uh, their memory alive. Uh, with their names are on a wall up there, but uh, you know, they gave they gave the ultimate. So we do want to thank the mayor and the council. You've been great supporters of public safety, and uh, thank you for your continued support in the police department. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Martin. Okay, the next item on our agenda this evening is the public comment period. Madam Clerk, could you please read the criteria for the public comment portion of this agenda? This time is reserved to accept comments from the public on consent agenda items, closed session items, or matters not otherwise scheduled on the agenda. Unless otherwise directed by the mayor, speakers will have three minutes uh, to comment. Directions to staff may be given. However, state law does not allow any action to be taken by the city council on matters not on the printed agenda this evening. Once the public comment period commences, no other speakers will be allowed to submit a request to speak for. Madam Clerk, do we have speakers this evening? Madam Mayor, we do, and we have three. Three, okay, no other requests will be, uh, to speak for them to be accepted at this time. And Madam uh, Clerk, could you please set the timer for three minutes? So I have Tara Presley, followed by Mike Cordero, followed by Bob Engel. Good evening, Ms. Presley. Good evening. And um, so I'm here representing Unity and Community, and we're going to be having the third annual Prayer Walk and Community Event Celebration on Saturday, May the 14th. And so we're really excited for this year's upcoming event. The focus is on the drugs, violence, and gang activity in our community. Um, we acknowledge that we have some, you know, issues that need to be addressed, and um, but we also have a lot of really great things going on in our community. And so that's kind of the tempo of the event is um, uplifting and, and really being supportive of all the other agencies that are used to effectuate the positive change in our community. So, um, you know, we start off at the top of the library parking structure at nine in the morning. Um, we walk down Broadway. Everybody's welcome to participate regardless of what their belief system is. Um, but the people of faith, we're going to be praying for our city and the people that live here. And then we conclude at the fair park and we have um, an opening ceremony um, where we're grateful that our mayor and, and city council people and um, Chief Martin and um, city manager Hayden, you know, we really appreciate all of your support. Um, the Grizzly Academy comes and performs their cadence, and then we have uh, music and, and dance and things going on outside, children's activities. We're really grateful for the Parks and Recs Department and for all that they're doing to be in support of this event. And um, then on the inside, we have resources where we invite different community resources 
um, that we've identified, and I'm sure there's a lot more out there, <laughs> um, that they get to come in and have a booth and interact with the community to let the community know what they do. We encourage people to start connecting and volunteering, financially supporting these organizations, and if nothing else, when they encounter someone that's in need, they have an idea of where to refer them to. Um, there's also prayer available if people want to seek that out. Um, this year we're excited. One of the performances is going to be the Rigetti High School's um, Marimba Band and Ballet Folklorico. So we're, we're pretty excited about that. And so um, we have uh, flyers that um, I gave to her for everybody. And um, if anybody wanted to pick some up afterwards, I hear that they'll be placed outside. So we just are really appreciative for all the support and invite everybody to come out. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Presley. Mike Cordero, followed by Bob Engel. Thank you, Mayor, City Council. I'm here tonight on behalf of CAC, which I continue to participate in and was assigned that at, as, a, as a council person. Uh, so I was uh, actively involved in the, um, in the background of creating what we now recognize as the 211 system. I received some rather uh, disturbing information that I thought uh, some people might have been ill-informed and that Santa Maria felt, some of the people in Santa Maria felt that Santa Maria was not using the 911 system, therefore they're not participating in supporting it financially. Uh, I'm here to tell you that nothing could be further from the truth. I provided you with, um, with some statistical data. Uh, in 2015, 55, uh, 1,615 calls were received from Santa Maria, 55 crisis calls and mental health issues and a suicide were, issued, were some of those, 12 domestic violence, and the top need seems to be uh, housing, mental health, addiction, some legal questions, and some consumer and public safety issues. One of the most telling things about these graphs that I provided is on page two of the colored graph. On the bottom portion it says call origin. You'll see that uh, Santa Maria and Santa Barbara receive basically the same amount of calls, 31%. And to the far right of that, there's a purple graph, and that's uh, identified by other unspecified calls for service. Those are the calls that where people refused to give their name, wanted to remain confidential, and the, uh, the uh, uh, calls that were in the unincorporated area. So that tells you that, that the two cities Santa Barbara and Santa Maria uh, received way more calls for service than the unincorporated area who is actually footing most of the bill. I'm not here to spend your money, and I'm not here fighting that, that something else happened, but I would like to see and hope that we can embrace this system. And I believe that Chief Martin will probably agree with this. I haven't spoken to him about this, but every single officer that has any tenure at all has gone to a call for service and had to walk away and say, there's nothing I can do. Typical to that would be like, hey, if he hits you for real, call me up. It's against the law. I'll take him to jail or I'll arrest him. And that only adds to the level of frustration for these people. And the 201 system is designed for handling issues that are not yet elevated to that of a criminal matter where an arrest can be made. And I thank you for your time and listening, and I hope that you'll have questions on that and you can, con you can uh, convey them to Holly Comedy, who is one of the statistical people down with uh, CAC. And I'd like to say I like uh, Rick Shirt and Howdy Chief Martin. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Cordero. Bob Engel. Honorable Mayor, fellow council members, I stand before you as the president of Santa Maria Valley Beautiful. Just wanted to let you and the viewing public know that Santa Maria Valley Beautiful is kicking off their annual judging Santa Maria Valley White. We've divided the Santa Maria Valley up into eight different divisions and we have volunteers going out and starting to judge and try to find um, the beautiful houses out there in five different categories. And we'll be back in September with the grand winners. We get five winners in each of the 18 category uh, areas and then we we pick the top five and bring back and showcase here to the council and have a reception at the Santa Maria Library 
We have a Facebook page, Santa Maria Valley Beautiful, and if anybody wants to uh, nominate a house or feels that we should look at it, they can get a hold of us that way. So thank you very much for your time and uh, of your public service. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Engel. Mr. Hayden, are there any comments you wish to make at this time? Okay, moving on to the consent calendar. Madam Clerk, could you please read item number three? Routine items are presented for city council approval without discussion as a single agenda item in order to expedite the meeting. The consent calendar is approved by roll call vote with one motion. These items are discussed only on the request of council members. Thank you. Before we move on, do any council members have items they wish to pull? No. No? Okay. Okay. With with that, Madam Mayor, I would move uh, for the approval of the consent yeah. calendar. Oh, one minute. Oh. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Boyson, uh, Madam Mayor Patino, members of the City Council, in your agenda packet, item 3K, the resolution uh, on item 3K has a date that the public hearing is going to be set for is July the 5th, Tuesday, July the 5th. Staff would ask that you amend that to reflect uh, Tuesday, June, June the 21st, okay. 2016. It was like that in the staff report and the recommendation. However, it did not get it on the, uh, the resolution as, as uh, June the 20, 21st. Okay, thank you. With that, Madam Mayor, I would uh, move for the approval of the consent calendar as amended. I'll uh, second that. It's been moved and second to approve the consent calendar. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Councilmember Boyson? Aye. Councilmember Ora? Aye. Councilmember Waterfield? Aye. Madam Mayor Patino? Aye. The next order of business is a public hearing. Madam Clerk, could you please read the title? The City Council will consider recommendations of the Planning Commission to adopt resolutions authorizing the filing of a mitigated negative declaration for Presker Commercial Center and amending the general plan land use policy map designation for the 5.0 acres from freeway service to community commercial and introduce an ordinance amending the zoning map for 5.0 acres uh, from freeway service to plan development freeway tower general commercial zoning district. Staff report is to be made by Community Development Director, Mr. Oppel. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Council members, I'd like to present to you tonight the Project Presker Commercial Center. The project, as you may recognize, is the undeveloped parcel that's just adjacent to the RV park and across from a couple of the, the hotels at the north end of town. The, um, let me see if it goes up. The off-ramp 101 off-ramp coming into town Broadway is right along the edge here. And then this is Presker Lane, which if you keep going along here, you end up running into fire station number three. So that's basically the, the general location. What we're looking at tonight is a, a general plan amendment going from freeway service to community commercial, a rezone from freeway service to PD-F <coughs> slash C2, which is general commercial with the, uh, the freeway tower sign overlay on the property. And then action that will be able to be completed once you have completed yours here tonight or in two weeks is the plan development for the actual project itself. Two maps for you displaying on the left side the general plan amendment showing the land use uh, designations in the area and the designation on this site. And then on the right, an aerial photograph uh, with the zoning. This is the site plan. If everything goes well tonight and the project is approved for the GPZ, then we'll be coming back and taking final action on the project, which includes a hotel, a large restaurant pad, uh, four retail spaces, and a Wendy's restaurant. Some of the components of the project are that it's a five acre site, access from Presker Lane, uh, almost 80,000 square feet of development in total, 108 room Hampton Inn and Suites, Wendy's restaurant and drive through, sit down restaurant, and then the, the four uh, multi tenant retail spaces. Just to give you kind of a glimpse of some of the architectural styling and some floor plans. This is the Wendy's, this is the restaurant elevations. 
in the multi-tenant uh, elevation. And then now with uh, the use of computer software and stuff, uh, the architects can do a lot better job with their renderings now. They can actually put these things into scale and perspective. And so uh, this is taken uh, probably from the third story if there were three story houses across the street from them looking down on the project site. This one looking across from the, the hotel across the street from them, looking across Broadway. And then just a little farther south as if you're doing southbound uh, 101 on ramp. So nice looking development. We're very happy with it. The CEQA review uh, consisted of a, a traffic study that was prepared in November of 2015. And we learned that there could be some impacts of the intersection of Presker and North Broadway uh, due primarily to the existing traffic conditions out there. And uh, the study required some improvements to the signal at Broadway as well as some restriping. A site visit was conducted by staff. Uh, no rare endangered plants, animals, or habitat were found on site. And then under air quality and greenhouse gases, uh, they were below all thresholds, but the APCD requested that we have standard mitigation measures for the construction phase of the project. The Planning Commission had a hearing on the 20th of April. The commission considered the staff report, the mitigated negative declaration, public comments, and then on a 5-0 vote recommended your city council approve the project with two resolutions, one for the MND and one for the GPZ. So the next steps for this project is for council uh, to consider action this evening. If it's approved, then there'll be a second reading in two weeks, and then it would return to the Planning Commission for final plan development approval, and then ultimately submittal of building permit applications. So these are the recommendations for you taken from the staff report, uh, adopting uh, a resolution authorizing the MND, adopting a resolution for the general plan land use policy map, and introducing an ordinance to amend the zoning map. So that completes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Oppel. Uh, is the applicant here? Would they like to make any comments? No? Okay. Madam Clerk, do you have any written correspondence? No, Madam Mayor, we do not. Uh, I'd like to open up to a public hearing. Madam Clerk, do you have any requests to speak in favor or to oppose this item? We have no requests to speak. Okay, so I'll close the public hearing, bring this item back to the council for discussion or, or motion. Ma could I? Mr. Uh, Boysen. Could ahead. I just ask a question? Uh, you, you're, we're changing from freeway service to uh, the um, uh, CC uh, designation. What, can you can you give us a little background on the back? On There's that? two reasons why the applicant requested it in this case. Uh, one is for height. Um, you're restricted to 35 feet with the with the uh, freeway service. Uh, the hotel was going to be taller than that. I think 50 feet when they added the um, decorative features and stuff. And so they needed something different for that. And also, um, the freeway service uh, has a limitation of of gas stations, restaurants, and motels, and they wanted to have a retail component in there. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to do that, they had to change the zone. Okay, thank you very much. Ms. Waterfield. No, I was just gonna oh, make you a motion oh. to adopt. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I would just like to make one comment before you do that. Um, it, I think I was coming in at five o'clock last night. Can you show the picture where the, um, that one, okay. The, the off ramp, the off ramp from 101, and, okay, say right about there. Traffic was all the way stopped there, all the way down, and that was a single lane. Then you have the, the traffic coming off from the loop around off of going north on 101, loops around and comes down there. So it was just a single lane backed up. And then so it, it has to go down to the right turn, two lanes going straight, and then a left turn. So it was all backed up in that single file. And when they turn right onto Presker Lane, we've got that fire station that's down there. And if they have to come out of there, I don't know where they're gonna go there on Presker onto North Broadway. That was my observation. Um, if I could just make a comment, Madam sure. Mayor. Um, we are requiring that they turn, they put a right-hand turn pocket off of Broadway onto Presker. So there'll be additional lane to get the right-hand movements onto Presker, and that's a heavy movement, so it should help clear up and alleviate some of that wrap backing up. 
how far back are you putting that? Because there, there's a right, right, right hand turn right there. About there. There is one there. No. There is it? There'll be a new one. A new a, one. Yeah. Okay. An extra lane just for okay. right hand turns. Because there's two lanes through, two and lanes there'll be a through. dedicated right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Madam Mayor, I would certainly encourage our SPCAG representative to maybe move this up on the uh, that's a, great, list a good of idea. I'll let her know <laughs> that. Thank yeah. you. Whoever she may be. Okay, Ms. Waterfield. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'd like to uh, make a motion to adopt Resolution 2016-50, approving the mitigation mitigated neg negative declaration for the Presker Commercial Center project, northwest corner of North Broadway and Presker Lane. Do you want to go ahead and throw the, throw the other resolution and the ordinance in there too? And also the Resolution 2016-51 to adopt approving the amendment to the general land, plan land use map from freeway service from freeway service to community commercial also ordinance uh, 2016-09 to be introduced for the first reading and continue to the next meeting for the second reading and adoption amending the zoning map for five acres from freeway service to plan development freeway tower general commercial zoning district Okay, I have a motion to approve resolution 2016-50, 2016-51, and an ordinance 2016-09 to be continued for the next meeting for adoption. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Councilmember Waterfield. Yes. Councilmember Ora. Aye. Councilmember Boyson. Aye. Madam Mayor Patino. Aye. Our next item is another public hearing. Madam Clerk, could you please read the title? The City Council will consider amending the Santa Maria Municipal Code Section 11-9.05, subsection D2, concerning the timing for setting the fair market value of acreage for, acreage for purposes of calculating the subdivision in lieu fee. Staff report is being made by Recreation and Parks Director, Mr. Posada. Good evening, Mayor, members of the City Council. The item before you tonight is kind of a housekeeping measure. Uh, you might recall back uh, in the fall, the Director of Public Works and I uh, presented the, uh, the growth mitigation program. One of the components of that presentation was to remove the, uh, what's called the subdivision in Luffy or the Quimbiac fees and the residential development tax from the growth mitigation program and move them back to being independent fees. This is one of the first steps in order to get that moving. The resolution that's attached, uh, <coughs> pardon me, uh, expands the date. Excuse me. <coughs> expands the date when these when these items will be brought to you. In prior day, uh, prior years, it has been a July 10th deadline. Uh, what we would like to do is move that into a, ro a rolling 12-month uh, period, rolling 12-month period uh, for approval. A lot of it depends on being able to get our appraisals done on time and then present it to you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. So uh, tonight, uh, what we would like you to do is uh, look at the uh, appraisal about the appraised value of land that has been set uh, uh, back in December uh, by an independent appraiser. Uh, that land value on a what we consider a raw piece of developable land in the city of Santa Maria has been set at $321,000 an acre. That figure is used to calculate out the Quimby uh, subdivision in lieu fees and then also the credit program that goes along with that. Uh, you might recall that was one of the issues we had uh, with the mit growth mitigation program, uh, that there was not a mechanism in that, in that ordinance to give credit. Uh, in subdivision in lieu, Quimby Act, we're able to have a mechanism, there is already a mechanism built into that that allows us to give credit for projects uh, that we deem uh, uh, necessary. So with that, I'll close, and if there's any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them for you. Any questions of Mr. Posada? Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, do we have any written correspondence? No, Madam Mayor, we do not. Okay, I'll open up the, I'll open this up for a public hearing. Madam Clerk, do we have any requests to speak in favor or opposition? We have no requests to speak at all. Okay, then I'll close the public hearing and bring this back to the council for discussion or a motion. Madam Mayor, Mr. I'd uh, move that uh, uh, for the uh, adoption of ordinance number 2016-10 to be introduced for its first reading and continued to the next meeting for the second reading and adoption. I'll second that. It's been moved and second to adopt ordinance 2016-10 
Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, Madam Kirk, could you please call the roll? Councilmember Boysen? Aye. Councilmember Roth? Aye. Councilmember Waterfield? Aye. Madam Mayor Patino? Aye. The next item will be a report by the city manager, Mr. Hayden. Thank you, Mayor Patino. Members of the city council, your next city council meeting will be two weeks from tonight, May the 17th, 2016. We will not have as many presentations and proclamations as we did this evening. Promise. Uh, but we will have just as many consent agenda items. Um, we will be having the 2016-17 CDBG final allocation uh, approval for the city council's consideration on consent that evening, along with the second reading of tonight's two items, the subdivision and Luffy, as well as the Presker uh, Commercial Center. We will also be having the Measure A program of projects for your consideration on the consent agenda, along with a SMAT Annual Transportation Development Act claim. We will also be having two public hearings at the next City Council meeting. One is a first reading for the Westgate Housing General Pan Amendment by the Tobes Group. And then the other one is the Urban Water Management Plan. It's the 2015 update. Couple regular business items. The first one will be the US 101 monument sign that we have north part of town that's going southbound off of Highway 101 at the uh, Broadway interchange for your consideration, along with uh, an amendment to the municipal code regarding transit rules of conduct. And then lastly, we'll be having our third quarter financial report for the fiscal year 15 16 presented by our Administrative Services Director, Mr. Vizay. That concludes my staff report for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Hayden. Next item is oral reports of council members. Ms. Waterfield, I'll start with you. Okie dokie. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, April 20th, I did the Ben Hayes Show, giving them a report of our city council meeting on the 19th. On the 25th, I attended Family Services Agency and they're a really great agency. One of their projects is the Big Brother and Big Sister program that is really successful. Um, I attended on the 27th, the Planning Commission meeting. On the 29th, I attended the Fire Department's badge pinning, which it was an honor to be able to uh, swear in the engineers, the new engineers of, this, of the Santa Maria firefighters. So that was just a, a, such a great honor. Um, on uh, Saturday, April 30th, I attended Comcast Cares. I gave the opening remarks. It was a cross the nation Comcast Cares day where they pick out a project from a city and Alvin School happened to be the project. And so they went in and they painted the, the United States on the playground. They painted some of the um, buildings that, that needed updating, they gardening, they did so many great things, clean windows. And um, that, was, um, that was my week. But I do have a question, and this is probably for community development. What is, what is the status of the project where the, the hotel was torn down and they were going, they were going mm -hmm. to build a whole new infrastructure there. Yeah, what is I that think it was status? called Town Center Inn. Or Town, Town Center, Center Inn, that's Center. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we actually talked to the owner last month and he's still trying to find financing okay. for the project. He's very much wanting to move forward with it. I think he's got his plans ready, um, but he just needs more investors. Okay, thank you. Mr. Orock. Oh, he woke me up. Uh, well, I attended the One Action Community uh, meeting last week, which was uh, packed with soccer folks and, other, <laughs> and others, and uh, they're coming with some basic strategic plans and things of that nature, so it's, it's moving a for, uh, forward. Uh, also attended the fire pinning here uh, with our new firefighters and um, so forth and so on, but I'll just mention that I had, uh, had the pleasure of Pretending, presenting or pinning the two new battalion chiefs, uh, Leonard Champion and uh, Tom Crakes. And as I said that night that those guys were sniffling little rookies so many years ago and now they're, they're grown up and 
Italian guys. So anyway, that was very nice. The but boys I, are watching you. Oh, yeah, they, they are. <laughs> That's okay. They're still snotty those kids. Uh, and then uh, one thing I want to thank the Times because the, uh, the focus on Santa Maria and the other organizations that came out was just phenomenal. I've had so many people that looked at that and asked for my autograph because my picture was in there. But uh, just basically Rick's statements and the mayor's statements and the chief statements and, and public works and engineering just shows that we've got so many, so many great people working for us that do so, some phenomenal things and, and just the city is run so magically because the mayor and the other council members, not myself included, of course. Thank you very much for that. Magic. Thank you, Mr. Warrick. Mr. Boyson. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Mayor, the only report, uh, the required reporting that I have is that I did attend on behalf of the city, the uh, Central Coast Water Association uh, monthly board of directors meeting on the 28th. We continue to work towards uh, procuring the uh, supplemental state water for the county of Santa Barbara, majority of it uh, coming to the city of Santa Maria. Um, everything continues to uh, move along positive on, on that regard and hopefully in the very near future we'll have um, some, some more good news on moving forward. Um, I did want to remind and you'll be receiving an email from Beth uh, over the next day or two, uh, Good Samaritan Shelter will be ha hosting what we call a friend raiser next uh, Thursday, May the 12th from 4.30 to 6.30 at the Hustle Barn out in Orca at off Salmon Road on Song uh, Way. It, it is a very low key event, it's, uh, there, it's no cost. Uh, come on out, have a glass of wine. Uh, 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 we'll have some light refreshments. There is a silent auction, but no requirements to participate. Uh, I will be joining you tomorrow morning, Madam Mayor, and, and participating in the SPCAG um, regional meeting at um, hmm. Buellton tomorrow. I guess they're going to be discussing the uh, bridge, uh, some of the uh, ideas on the bridge on Highway 246, which is close to um, the homeless shelter down there that I'm interested in seeing. And finally, I would like to ask Mr. Oppel to repeat some of the numbers that he gave me this morning. I uh, was asked to do a sound bite for uh, KSBY. And um, I asked Mr. Oppel for some building activity and he, the numbers he provided me, I was astounded. So if you. The, the numbers that I gave Councilmember Boysen um, talked about the number of uh, permits uh, that we have had over the last few years. You know, we had quite a drop with the recession. Um, in 2009, when I first started here, we issued permits for two new homes. Um, <laughs> The, the year after that, we had a 300% increase and uh, had uh, six homes that were, um, uh, had permits issued. And then in 2015, I did some uh, checking and we have probably about eight or nine projects that are going right now in some form of construction. Some of them may be done now, but um, the numbers that those add up to are 1,129. So we really had a significant increase in the number of uh, uh, housing units being constructed, and, and I don't believe that included the, uh, well, yes, it did include the, uh, the new uh, Tobes project, but um, a lot more units than we had had in the past, and so we're very happy with it. And, and it's a full range, you know, we have affordable units and we've got the luxury units, so, um, and, and there's no um, forced um, provision of these units at the price ranges and stuff, the applicants are doing it on their own. Um, when I worked for the county, we had inclusionary housing, and if you didn't build something special, you had to pay extra, and, and uh, it's just nice working here and having developers willing to come in and use the different uh, densities that we have to be able to achieve the various pricing structures. So, very fortunate what we have here. Thank you, Mr. Oppel, and, and uh, more on the way. We uh, have the um, uh, several different projects that are in the pipeline. Developers are uh, crossing their T's and dotting their I's. So um, I, uh, you know, the, the housing stock is, is going to be increasing. It's desperately needed, and hopefully it'll uh, bring down the vacancy rates and uh, get some of the people out of our shelters. Anyways, that's it for me, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. I have one question that triggered uh, a project on McCoy right next to um, 
those townhomes, if you're driving west on the right-hand side, I forget the name Somerset? of that project. No. Is it across it's, the street from it, It's the right condos? before Somerset, that empty lot that yeah. was condos and then went to yeah. apartments. Yeah, Refugio. Yes. Uh-huh. They've come in, they're, they're going through plan checking now. They are? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. How many uh, apartments? I can't, do you, either of you guys remember it was for me? No. Uh, I, 100 plus, I, I, I don't know if it was, you know, 180 or something, but it was, a, it was approaching 200 from what I saw on the list. Wow, it's going to be mm -hmm. a busy street. Yeah. And then the memory center's getting underway pretty yes, soon, too. Yes, absolutely. The and then the uh, senior housing is completed across the street. That used to be Dan Blau's project. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's a done. Mm -hmm. Holy moly. Okay. Okay. I, April 20th, I provided the welcome at the Vandenberg Small Business Outreach event, which uh, Vandenberg did with our Chamber of Commerce. April 21st, I attended the SBCAG monthly board meeting, and then that afternoon, the legislative webinar, a briefing on priority bills that impact local government. April 22nd, I attended the Santa Maria Veterans Treatment Court graduation ceremony. And uh, that evening, um, Mr. Orock was there, we, and uh, Ms. Zuniga, we t attended the Downtown Friday booths, judging and ribbon cutting. I don't think I, we did any judging, we just did the ribbon cutting. Ribbon okay, cutting. well, maybe we were supposed to be doing the judging. <laughs> okay, April 23rd was the Elks Queen kickoff dinner and auction. The 26th of April, I attended Pacific Christian School and visited, a, thir a third grader had written me a note and asked me to come to their open house and I wasn't available, so I did attend um, one day for a brief 20 minutes, half an hour. I uh, went to Rotary April 27th. I attended California Women for Agriculture, uh, Santa Maria chapter, Peter Adam was the speaker. I went to La Revista Oki Magazine, which they had an open house and ribbon cutting. Uh, did a stuffing party for Rotary. We put together the plastic, the Ziploc bags that we give to Good Samaritan in our Rotary. And that ev evening attended the One Community Action Committee meeting where there was probably 300, 350 people. There was a good many at Manami Center. Um, April 28th, I attended the SR, that's the State Route 166 Safety Task Force meeting at the Highway Patrol Office. And that evening, the ladies get loud for calm, which was full of women at the Country Club. Um, April 29th, uh, the North County Cade Advisory. We had, I administered the oath to uh, fire at the fire department, pinch batting, badging ceremony to new firefighters. And this morning did the Ben Hayes show, um, did the Ben Hose radio show. And so what you'll be doing tomorrow morning. So any other comments from council members? If not, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes tonight's meeting. Good night.